Big buckets. How are LA you, skipper. I'm How really good, mate. Yeah, crazy good, good. times. Crazy times. Crazy times. This is what this is what we've been reduced to. Um, we're used to the well. What are we? Three times a week usually catching up. I know. Plus school drop-offs and. I was kick. It's killing me. It's killing me. But um, I must admit, I must admit, I initially like it was a real shock. But but I wouldn't say I'm enjoying it. But there are aspects of it that I'm enjoying, like. I, I've, I finished work at 3 o'clock last Thursday, which is just unheard of for me. Picked up all the boys, took them down to the park. There would have been 15 or 20 dads down there doing the same thing, having a kick of the footy, running around, playing a bit of cricket. So, you know, I, I've got three boys, three little boys, and each of them do something different. So it's, it's just great to actually be able to look back over this period, as bad as it is for us all, to say, you know what, I've been able to sit at home and you know, lock in and do some amazing stuff with the boys. So it's, it's been great in that respect. You're all, you've always been a glass half full man. I love I love that about you. And this is this is no exception. So we're, we're having dinner roo tonight. Deliveroo have, uh, have delivered the food. So have your, yours is there. And, and how red is it? Too. You've got the red as well. I've got the glass of water. But we've gone with the, um, well, Obviously, cast from the states, and we we have um, we have withdrawals at times. So we've, I've gone for the uh, the brisket, the smoked brisket. Yeah. And I've sent you across some brisket as well from um, Cold Blooded Griller, just uh, the local up the road here. How, how is yours? Mine's Mate, mine's pretty good. My, mine's perfect. perfect. Mine is perfect. You know me, I've already polished mine off. But I've actually <laughs> got it left, but it's uh, no, it's sensational. Beautiful, beautiful. I had spider last week. Big spot. Of course, he was up on the um, he was up on the Gold Coast, and I'd already eaten the Chinese. He was pretty happy with that. If if you um, if you went the order yourself, what's what's your go to? Oh mate, would would have been would have been uh, Vietnamese. Um, probably uh, probably something local, but um, yeah, Vietnamese pasta. I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty I'm pretty easy, mate. Have you got a local Vietnamese joint you go to? I knew you'd ask me that. Um, I'd say the place around the corner from you guys. Buffalo Boy. Buffalo Boys. Buffalo Boys. There you go. There you Buffalo go. Boys, good. Buffalo Boys, good. Well, there you go. You can get that tomorrow night with your kids. Um, Spider was good. He was he was in he was in pretty good form. Mate, I I I hadn't seen him for a couple of years, and we we're we we're up at uh, up in. Noosa, I think we were just the start of last year when you were able to travel and um, the big fella was up there. So we caught up and um, I must admit it was uh, it was a bit surreal. I thought I was looking at myself because he's got no hair either. He's a nude nut as well. But um, <laughs> no, he's a great man, Spider. I actually I actually had him working for me as an 18-year-old apprentice. Um, so thank God he became a better footballer than he was a carpenter because he, he, was, he was pretty ordinary. He liked to think he was pretty handy. He was he was handy in the fact that we never needed a ladder anywhere we went, um, but uh, he was he was pretty rough. He, he, there wasn't much dexterity to his carpentry skills. Is is he is he is an out there a teammate as you've had in your time? Uh, yeah, there's some stuff that we probably can't discuss that he that he got himself uh, into. Um, <laughs> the thing I loved about Spider though. You knew where you stood. Um, he he was that guy that um, you know when, when you needed to play footy, he, he he put his head down and he worked bloody hard. And he was he was one of the most skillful tap ruckman and agile guys for his height um, and, and ahead of his time um, back when he was playing. Yeah. But yeah, in in a team meeting, I loved him because he sometimes come from left field and sometimes as a skipper. You'd sort of have to sit back and sort of deflect, and you've got to sort of toe the party line. But Spider would just say it as it is, and uh, yeah, yeah, we, we we had some interesting meetings back back in those days with Stan uh, in particular. He was he was he was before his time, immediate and honest feedback. Uh, oh mate, he was a ripper. He um he, he had his finger in everything. Um, you know, if you needed anything, you 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 you'd ring him. He was he was building garage doors there for a while. Um, he had nightclubs down at uh, <laughs> down at Mornington where Penny yeah. and Jason Cripps met. 
Um, so yeah, no, good times, good good times. Yeah, nice. Hey, um, so you, for that, for those out there that don't know, um, we've got kids in the uh, in the same class at school. Uh, they play Oz kick together. How, how, are the, how are the boys, mate? How are the boys coping? Because I know James. James got wind today that I was having dinner with you tonight, and but he couldn't quite piece together that it was happening um, through the internet. So, he, but he was very je- jealous. How are the boys? Well, you, you know, uh, there's uh, they're, they're just there's an unbelievable fondness between. James and James and, and, and my two little twins, uh, who obviously have, have been through kinder together and um, you know absolute besties. Um, but uh, yeah, look, it's they've been really good. We've 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 got the tent out. We normally go camping down at Wilson's Prom every Easter. They've they've done it all their lives, um, including Ollie and and Sam, who's who's 21 this year and October. Um, he, he's done 15 years straight. So it was a bit different for us not going down uh, to the prom. Uh, mind you, with the weather on Saturday night, we were pretty lucky yeah. we, were, we were here. But uh, yeah. we, we pitched the tent out, which I know we've we've shared some some uh, some photos back and forth. And uh, <laughs> we we had a ball. We we slept out there. I, well, I was out there two nights. I've managed to get Katrina out there on the last night. But um, oh, what well are trains? Yeah, we had the we had the fire going, a toasted mm-hmm. marshmallows, which which all the kids said was a bonus because down the prom, obviously, you can't have fires. Um, we did we did a few walks along the beach um, down between sort of Sorrento and Black Rock up in the tea trees there, trying to replicate sort of Tidal River and, and yeah. Mount Oberon. So, uh, you know, we, we had a good time. You know, it certainly yeah, it wasn't was... the prom, but um, a little bit less beer drunk, um, but uh, still a good time. Do you have any camping rules? Did you have the bush bush toilet or...? Uh, <laughs> have you been talking to the boys? <laughs> uh, we did, we did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, out the out the back, around the corner, um, over the uh, lemon <laughs> tree. Uh, just all the usual, yeah, all the usual stuff. In between the yeah. goalposts, we got set up and the cricket pitch and the basketball ring and everything oh, else is, down here. It is one of the great, it is one of the great setups, the low household, no no doubt about that. One one little interesting feature that I do love about um, your place, um, but I'm I'm dobbing you in here as a as a kleptomaniac because you're a thief when uh when the big new redevelopment at moorabbin happened um to two ex and kilda players who you know you, you're one of them and you, you're great mate spud you went down to moorabbin and, and ripped up all the old seats and you, you you've incorporated them into your own seating yep. at, at home Explain. Yeah, no, no, I, um, yeah, the great man came up with the idea. I must admit it wasn't mine. Um, and uh, oh, yeah. he, he, uh, he said, let's, uh, we've got basically a week to get some, some of these old green grandstand seats out. And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about um, making something out of them. And, you know, what do you think? And I said, mate, absolutely great idea. I'm in. So, we rocked up on a Friday uh, afternoon, unbeknownst to us, uh, all of the Sandy Dragons boys were training out there. Um, Big Max and Benny King were down there, and I know Brooke, um, who, was, who, was, who was down there amongst uh, the crowd of parents that were watching. Um, Spuds turned up with a hammer uh, and a handsaw. Um, we've walked up into the derelict grandstand. I've quickly realised that a handsaw and a hammer weren't going to cut the mustard, so I've shot back to the factory. Got a, uh, I got a compressor, uh, sorry, generator, uh, some power tools, um, a grinder. About an hour and a half later, sparks flying everywhere. We've had every parent sort of screaming at us, yelling at us. We've cut up about <laughs> sort of 15 or 20 lengths of uh, grandstand, which was sensational. And we're we're third level on the old member stand. And the old uh, stand, I'm, yeah. Yeah, right up, right up top. And I've said, to, I've said to Spart, I said, mate, um, I'm on the last couple here. Uh, we've got sweat dripping down us. We both like doesn't take much for us to, to 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 draw a sweat, and we were just filthy, dirty, sweat rolling down us. So I said, mate, why don't you start taking these down the car? So thinking that he's going to carry them down the stairs, and I'm <laughs> grinding away. Next minute, I can hear these blokes down the grandstand. It was actually Sean Ralph Smith, and he didn't know it was us at the time. Um, Spud's just piffing all of the uh, full lengths, uh, probably three to four metre lengths of grandstand seats over the top of the grandstand, hitting the bottom, shooting off everywhere. Typical Spud just 
just <laughs> don't think, just do. Anyway, we we sat up there for a, for a, about 30 seconds and I've told this story before and it was, it's just something that will live with me forever. We looked at each other and just had one of those special moments, mate. And I know you and I have had a couple of moments when we've walked out to the, uh, the edge of the bars and compared notes and just thought about what could have been. And, and, and it was just that nice moment to have where we both sort of looked at each other and understood just what the place meant to us and, and how much we'd sort of bled for the club. And, and, um, and then we, we got up and as per usual, he jumped in his car and I was left to load the car up and uh, <laughs> take them back to my factory. And I, I've got, I, as you said, I've, I've, I've made up a couple of bench seats out in the front courtyard and, um, yeah, everyone who comes in gets a bit of a tour and a look at those because I've kept all the numbers on them and and, uh, yeah. and popped them up and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's they've become even more and more special. Uh, I've got a few pieces left uh, which I'm going to make the girls uh, a a coffee table or something for the farm, um, which uh, which I promised him I was going to do, um, and uh, and obviously that's the girls as well. Yeah, great. Uh, it's a beautiful story, mate. And, um... Nice little, uh, nice, nice little addition to the to the home. Hey, um, you played. You're one of the few players that, that actually got to play across um, three eras. So you caught the end of the '80s. Is that right? Yeah, 80, 86. I, I got down the club at yeah. 86. I debuted. Yeah. So you caught. So you caught the end of the '80s. You played all the '90s, and then the, the start of the the, the 2000s. Yeah. So. We're doing the, the Saints are doing the thing at the moment, going through the, the 90s as a, as a decade. What was your what was your favourite decade out of the, out of the three? Oh, look, the 90s, 90s for sure. I think um, I think looking when you start, you, you you don't know. So you know when I when I first started, Graham Jelly was our coach. Um, we were, were struggling. I think uh, we hadn't won a game when I debuted in '86. We eventually won a game uh, against Melbourne um, in the mud, which might have been our first game at about round 12 or 14. I remember a couple of weeks later, we lost a couple of games and, and Graham called us in on a, on a Tuesday uh, afternoon when we were traditionally trained Tuesday, Thursday, playing on, playing on, a, on a Saturday. Um, he called us in on a Tuesday and he said, righto, boys, everyone who's played in more than 10 winning games at St Kilda go and stand in that corner of the room. There was about three or four blokes, Barks, Burnsy, maybe Joffa. They walked over that corner. Anyone who's played in between five and ten, go in that corner. Anyone who's played in two to five, go in there. Anyone who's played in zero to two. And there was about 15 of us in that group. And that just, yeah. we all sort of, I look back and we all talk about that that particular meeting going, God, how, how, how did we cope? But we... We then had an influx of, of the Carlton Brigade and, and um, you know, Kenny Sheldon, who's a great mate and a super coach and a great teammate. You know, Wow, wow Jones, Pete McConville, um, Spiro Corkamilis. Um, you know, uh, it, it, they, that, that really, I think, was the start of um, changing sort of culture and, and, and belief. And, and yeah, you know, we recruited some really, some really good blokes. Uh, we had a great sort of... Um, sort of group of sort of players coming out of Frankston. That Frankston um, zone was really good for us with Berkey and Haas and Spide and Peko uh, and myself to a certain extent. And, um, and yeah, we, we eventually, you know, we, we, you know, we, we had an awesome team in the early 90s and, you know, woulda, shoulda, coulda. Uh, yeah. Probably, you know, we, we, we were the best team in the comp. We should have we won a flag without a doubt. We, you know, arguably, we, we had the best player probably that I've ever played with, probably two of them, um, in, a, in, in the one side. And, um, yeah, we just didn't quite get there, mate. But, um, but I'd say, I'd say the question, uh, you know, the 90s for sure for me. I think it was – it was, and I'm not one of those blokes who sit back and pots what's going on nowadays. Um, I love footy and I love watching it and I understand it's different to what it was back then. But there was a lot of bad games back when I played, but the good games – um, where you got 127 versus 120, um, and the ball's whizzing up and down, and you got key forwards clunking the ball, you got halves running around with Mick McGuan tagging him, going from start to finish, you know, racking up, you know, 35, 40 touches. Um, it was it was dynamic, great footy, and I understand I understand that there's the defensive side of it, and you've got to 
you know, stop the opposition and that's the way you want to win. But, geez, there were some, some great looking games back in those days. The, um, we've been doing at Fox Footy the, the countdown of the, the 50 best games and the 94 game against the Swans where, where Plugger went off oh. was was in the top 50 and um, yeah. it, yeah. it was a pretty pretty wild exhibition. I uh, I didn't mind I didn't mind the SCG and I remember I remember Kenny. Um, I remember you saying to me the SCG was a centre half forward's dream. Yeah, it wasn't that day because all I did was watch Plugger go clunk clunk clunk, <laughs> and I was absolute box seat. Um, that was yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, that, that, that was that was that, that was definitely definitely one for the ages. Um, mate, he, he was just a freak. He was a freak. He's just um, just a just a, a ballistic animal. Like he's just he was so so quick off off the off the mark and um, just never missed. He just never missed. Jeez, I wish I could have kicked like him. Oh, yeah, no, you and me both. Hey, speaking of freaks, you look like you could still play. What's the secret? Mate, you know, you know it's, all, it's all bluff, mate. It's all bluff. Mate, stand, stand up and lift your shirt up. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I've always got a bit of rig in you. Mate, you've never got a shirt on. I can't believe you've got one on for this. It's unbelievable. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm, hey, I've got good jeans and plenty of red wine, my friend. <laughs> well lubricated, uh, mate. This is this has been fun. Um, let's uh, let, let's try and do it again next week. We'll we'll get the we'll get the boys um, together. We'll do it early, and you can send some delivery around to our house. Absolutely, mate. And I definitely definitely want to take you up on uh, that Oz Kit Clinic. So um, yeah, perfect. I, I've been watching a little few of your clips, and you you're not too bad. Not too bad for a novice. So, I've learned from the best, Slowey. Learn from the best. Uh, uh, well, thanks for having uh, thanks for uh, thanks for having dinner with me. Enjoyed it. Um, we'll catch up soon. No worries, mate. Stay safe, Saints fans and uh, players, and let's hope that uh, the boys are back out very very soon. Here, here. Cheers, Slowey. See you, mate. Take care.